province is pumping millions of dollars into a trades training plan to secure jobs for the future. The B.C. government is offering $10 million for job training projects over the next three years. The Minister of Jobs, Pat Bell, says business and industrial groups facing labour shortages can apply for funding under the program, with up to $500,000 available for each training project. The programs could also help train heavy equipment operators and drivers for the mining industry. The goal is to prepare the unemployed and those with few skills for jobs across a range of occupations from retail to industrial. A Vancouver Island grocery store is honoring volunteers for their acts of kindness. Thrifty Foods is marking its 25th Sendial anniversary this holiday season by thanking its volunteers. More than 600 volunteers attended the program's celebration today at the Empress, hosted by CTV's Bruce Williams. Every year, Thrifty Foods delivers groceries to nearly 1,500 customers that are homebound. This afternoon, five Sendile volunteers received a special honour in recognition of their years of service. One recipient says it's been very rewarding and shared a funny story with us. An old gentleman who was recently retired asked me if he, I could send him some lumpy stuff. And I said, lumpy? My goodness, what is lumpy? And I racked my brain, do you have it for breakfast? Do you have it for lunch? Do you have it for dinner? Oh, sometimes one of those. And I said, I know what it is. It's chunky soup. That's it. That was a funny one. But it took a bit of thinking to get the answer. They go up and down the aisle. Split, split pea with ham, my favourite. If you'd like to volunteer or use the Send Isle service, log on to thriftyfoods.com. A Port Alberni man has been killed on vacation in Hawaii while fulfilling one of his life's dreams. 65-year-old Alan Parker was riding a bicycle when he collided with an oncoming vehicle. Parker was riding along a country road in Maui on Sunday morning, heading down a hill on Makaweo Avenue. His wife says her husband was an adventurer who loved to travel and tackling that hill on his bicycle was on his bucket list. But when he came upon a sharp curve in the road, he failed to negotiate the turn. Parker's bicycle swerved into the opposite lane just as a Honda Element rounded the corner. The vehicle struck him head on. Parker was wearing a helmet but suffered severe injuries. He died at Maui Memorial Medical Center an hour after the crash. He was riding a bike down. We're going to try and say this. Hala Laka some, it's famous. He's wanted to do it for years. And he kept saying it was on his bucket list to one day come down that mountain on a bike. It's a thing they do on Maui. And so on this trip, he made arrangements to do that. He was uh, beloved. He truly was. He um, contributed to his community. He had a wonderful sense of humor. He loved life and he loved retirement. Sorry, it's been hard. It's just been a day. But I want to say that everybody's been great. They were great on the cruise ship. They were great at the airport. They've just been great all along. Parker was a retired city planner who spent years in Port Alberni's engineering department. He leaves behind three children from his first marriage, his wife Isabel and their son Alan. Funeral arrangements are still being made. Nanaimo RCMP are asking for the public's help after a young man was stabbed in the back on his birthday. It happened just before midnight on Friday outside of Level 2 Nightclub at Skinner Street. The 23-year-old man was out celebrating his birthday with friends and family. The victim told police he stepped outside to look for his brother and became involved in a disagreement with several unknown men. He then received a stab wound to his lower back. He was then taken to the hospital by his family member and was treated for a stab wound later released. We are working closely with the bar. There's indications there is also an altercation inside the bar, which this male may have been involved in. We don't know at this point, but the surveillance video is being obtained. We'll be looking closely at that, and it also will be looking at the surveillance video from outside the bar as well. If you have any information about the attack, you're asked to call Nanaimo RCMP. The newly elected school trustees for Nanaimo Ladysmith are having their first meeting tonight and hundreds of parents and teachers are expected to be there. They're rallying to get the trustees' attention. They've been on strike for months with limited job action that includes refusing to do administrative duties. 
They want the school board to take notice and make some changes. Uh, for six years now, uh, boards of trustees have been declaring all our classes as appropriate for student learning. And we're hearing from families, from students, from teachers, that it's anything but. We have been suffering from chronic underfunding in our district for 10 years. And our board of trustees, they approve any funding model that comes through uh, from senior management. We want them to challenge those, uh, those budgets. We'd like them to see, uh, send a message to the government that our classes are not appropriate for student learning and send a message to government that get to the bargaining table and bargain with our teachers. Uh, we want guaranteed supports and we want guaranteed class size limits and uh, that they expect that the government to be working with our teachers to that end. The teachers began their job action in September, but there has been little movement in the dispute since. Patients who spend Christmas at Nanaimo Regional General Hospital will be able to receive well wishes from friends and family around the world this year thanks to a new email program. It's called Well Wishes. Hospital volunteers receive the messages, print them and then deliver them to patients by hand. The program began today at NRGH, but the Vancouver Island Health Authority is hoping to roll it out to other hospitals up and down the island. The hospital says communications from loved ones can play a strong role in boosting patients' spirits and their health. Well, I think obviously the, the nice surprise because they won't necessarily be expecting this to happen. They'll be able to get messages from people that, uh, that you know, can't come and visit them, which is, I think, a really important thing. Um, if you've got a, a granddaughter in Nova Scotia or something, she'll be able to send you a message in the hospital and get it the day that, you, that you're in. So I think that's really exciting. To email a patient at NRGH, send your message, including the patient's first and last name and room number, to patient.nrgh at viha.ca.